Um, so let's go on to proofs with um, Agda. Um, one thing that is very fundamental to this is um, the curry howard correspondence, which many people are familiar with, but um, it's basically a correspondence between uh, certain kinds of type systems or any kind of type system and, and uh, an associated logic. And um, the usual one for the languages we use, Haskell and Agda and things, um, is with intuitionist logic. Um, which is sort of like classical logic, but has a few gotchas, which I'll go into. Um, but the empty type corresponds to false. Any non-empty type is true. It might carry a bit of additional information, but um, it, it's at least true. Um, sum and products are or and and. Functions are implication. Dependent pairs and functions give you existentials and for all. And um, negation is anything that implies false is, is not true. Um, and so, um, this is, uh, you can write, um, even in Haskell, there's, in the Haskell channel, there's something called Jin, which will, uh, which will figure out proofs of simple, simple, uh, um, logical, logical statements, um, in phrasing terms of Haskell types. Um, and so, constructive proofs. Let's say, for example, we want to work with De Morgan's laws. Um, pretty much everyone knows them. This is an expression of De Morgan's law is in Agda, or one of, one of them. Um, not A or B, either is, is A or B, um, implies not A and not B. And the proof of that is, is a simple pair, um, and it's basically, um, yeah, that term. However, if we, if we have the other De Morgan's law. Um, there, there's obviously another side to that, the other direction of the implication, and that has the same problem as this does. Um, we have not A and B implies not A or not B. And unfortunately, we can't actually write that in Agda or Haskell or any of these similar logics um, directly. Yes, um, and that is because it's not, um, it's not a constructive kind of proof. So um, in classical logic, you can, often make, you can often make a proof by saying, I, I'm going to make a convincing argument that this object exists, and I'm not going to provide, provide it for you. I'm just going to say, there exists a number such that um, such that it's square of 16. And I'm going to make a long-winded argument about it and not give it to you. Um, and, uh, and this kind of logic re rejects that kind of proof. It says, well, if you, can't, if you can't come up with four for me, I'm not going to believe you. Um, it doesn't mean that the second De Morgan's Law is false. It just means you can't prove it. Um, and it's sort of a subtle philosophical distinction. But it's, um, this, uh, this constructive, or also known as intuitionist logic, um, is actually um, quite sort of popular in computer science simply because it, it's sort of, we like to compute things, we like to come up with answers for things. It's a lot more useful to us to be able to say, well, this is a number such that, such that it's square 16 rather than saying there exists a number such that it's square 16. And so this, for various related reasons, um, cannot be proved um, uh, because this negation is not, is not a useful, useful term for us. We can't Negation, as I mentioned, is implies false, which means um, basically this is a, a secretly a function from A and B to, to false. And that would mean to call this function, I would need to um, produce a value of A and B. And I simply don't have one. And so uh, we, we get another sort of very common um, thing, double, double negation. You can say A implies not not A. Um, that works fine for us because we have, a, we have a nice concrete A to begin with here. Um, so we can do stuff with it, and this is basically just flipped application, function application. However, the opposite, double negation introduction is what I call that, um, double negation elimination can, can't be written in Agda or Haskell or any or COG without some, without some postulates. Um, and that's simply because, as I mentioned, this is a function, um, and I've got nothing to feed the function. Now, this isn't really all that crippling, because with both the De Morgan 2 and uh, the double negation elimination, you can always add one more not. Yeah, and, yeah. And so, so yeah, so uh, so you can you can enter enter the uh, the world of classical logic by uh, double negating everything, um, for example, um, and that's sort of a more subtle point. But yeah, if, if you if you don't care about being able to produce values of things, all you got to do is live in a place where no one produces anything. Interesting, <laughs> interestingly, you you can do double negation elimination in standard ML of New Jersey. Okay. Um, if you are otherwise total because it has call CC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. you actually can pop out 
that type in a reasonably constructive setting. Yeah, it's fairly horrible, but yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, I mean, you're still not okay. Yeah, you're you're, you're still in this call, call CC gives you every every functor being co-strong and all sorts of things. And all other them. delicious. Yeah. Things. Well, the, but I mean, it's it's um, it, it's also important if you want um, a Curry Howard interpretation of um, of Gerard's linear logic as opposed to linear type systems that we have, because there's that one extra um, uh, operator that is control. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And with with a control operator in your Proof language, you can get that yep. and stay sound and stay constructive. Yeah, well, Cock, which I is cool. Cock also does does that simply by separating propositions from uh, from sets, and you can say uh, you can say, well, I can put double negation elimination into prop because I'm not going to have to produce any real values from it. Um, uh, uh, and that's, that's another approach to it, which is uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's less it's less clean. Well, it, it, but it, yeah. it, it, I mean, there are big differences, but yeah. Cox logic and Magnus yeah. logic aren't importantly yeah. that different in yeah. that case. Whereas, yeah. by by thinking of it. Which is weird, but by thinking of your term language as maybe being interesting, yeah. which I know is strange, but <laughs> you think of your term language as being interesting, maybe you can prove more types. And mm -hmm. yeah. how fascinating! Yeah. First, you just double negate everything, and then you're you're back in your world. You can do everything you want to do, anyway. Um, but you can sort of. But but yeah. you're not modeling that. Um, you actually have it. Anyway, going on. Um, so say we rewrote this function uh, simple addition on piano naturals. Um, yeah, and I, I recurse on the first argument. Um, so zero plus n is n, and the successor of n plus n is successor of n plus n, with reparenthesized in such a way that it actually recurses. Um, and so say I want to prove some basic properties about this. So um, I'm going to, first of all, define a really useful type, which is used in a lot of proofs in Agda and other similar Things you can write a similar type in, in Haskell with the JDT, but um, it's not as useful. But it's this equality type, and this is um, again an inductive family kind of thing. Um, it takes an implicit set um, that is a type, a value of this type, um, and is indexed by another value of this type. And all it's saying, all this is saying, is if I provide a constructor, this constructor requires these two to be equal. REFL stands for reflexive. It's one of the one of the requirements of an equality relation, but um, or an equivalence relation, um, and so basically the only time I can I can pr I can actually use this if I, is if Agda can see that these two, that the two parameters to this are equal. And well, syntactically equal? I mean, in Cock it's syntactic. Yeah, it's, it's the same in Agda. It's it's, not, it's a very very um, primitive equality. So you might need to jump through several hoops, and I, I'll show the few hoops um, that you need to jump through to actually let it see that. Um, and so, because you can only construct this when they're equal, um, when you pattern match on it, it will figure out that they're equal. Um, and so, um, I'm going to write this uh, this handy lemma, um, which also is known as a helper function, um, com, um, and um, it's basically saying for any function a a to b, for any sets a and b, um, given two implicit values x and y. Um, if x equals y, then f of x equals f of y. That seems fairly legit. Um, for any function, that must be true, any pure function. Um, and everything is pure and negative because it makes things a lot easier to think about. Um, so structural equality implies Leibniz inequality. Yeah. Um, and so here, if we, if we, if we Ag, oh, the reason no. I've been using this notation is because that's actually what Agda's um, pseudo uh, IDE gives you. It lives in Emacs and it gives you this kind of thing. Um, it's not a quality, it's identity. And um, so um, if you look at the goal type here, you, you can ask it, um, what, if, what is my goal here? It's f of x equals f of y. And in context, I have f is a to b, is a function from a to b, and the equality is x that x equals y. And so I'm going to say, well, I'm going to pattern match on that equality. And what that's going to do, it's going to remove that equality from my context, and it's going to make a very subtle change of that y to an x. And that just means I pattern matched on it, um, therefore I introduced the knowledge that they are equal. And now my goal is different. Um, and now my goal is of the form q equals q, so I can actually write REFL there. And Agda can see that and type check it and say, good. Um, so I've written my lemma, my helper function. Um, now I'm going to go state my actual, the actual property I care about, which is that addition is associative. I've just picked something that I 
something simple. Everyone knows addition is associative on the naturals, um, or I'd hope it would be. Um, and it takes, uh, this is a simple function, um, also known as a, as a theorem. Um, it's a x, y, z. It um, takes three, three naturals. This is just telling you to infer the type or unify the type with these. Um, I don't really do inference, but it does unification. Um, basically, implicitly determine the type of these three guys and um, say, produce one of these equality guys that x plus y plus z is equal to x plus y plus z. And so if I go and ask for the type in here, I, uh, I see my goal is, is pretty scary looking. I, I don't really know how to produce a value of this type at this point. So what I'm going to do is, as usual, pattern match. Um, now I have three things I can pattern match on, x, y, and z. And um, just because I'm going to pattern on x, it's the pattern match on the x. It's the first parameter, and it's actually going to work out there nicely. Um, so pattern matching on x, it gives me two, two options. And I have two holes now. In my first hole, I have a 0 plus y plus c is equal to 0 plus y plus c. Um, it's you know, substituted x because x is now 0. We know it to be 0. Um, and so this is actually going to reduce because, as I mentioned, Agda's equality is very dumb. And, um, but it is, it is smart enough to sort of partially evaluate this guy. So it's his 0 plus, And you see that there's a 0 plus up there and 0 plus over there too. So it can s simply see that 0 plus anything is that anything and reduce it to that. And so the goal becomes this, which is again of type q equals q, so I can simply write a REPL in there. When does it decide to do that? It does it immediately. You don't have to ask it. I, I just put the intermediate step in there. Um, just oh, it tries just to clean to, up things as hard as it yeah, can. Yeah, it's, it's basically yeah, it's doing evaluation at compile time, and it can only evaluate things that it knows. Um, and so had it been n plus 0, um, it wouldn't have been able to reduce that because I don't have an equation up there saying what it is. Right. Um, and so I can write a REPL in there. And so what I have here is um, I know that x is a suck x, and so what it's doing is um, applying this function for us, the, the second clause of the plus, um, and it's, uh, it's evaluated. Our goal is now that suck over there. And so um, now, the, there's a pattern there, which um, is conveniently what I defined in my helper function up there. And so I have a, a function, this is suck, um, is equal to a, a function of the something is equal to a, the same function of something else. And here, that's what I have. A function, same function, different things equal. And so um, I use that. Um, I would like to use that function. Um, of course, that function is going to require another parameter. And that other parameter is going to be these other things. But I'm going to ask Agda to put that in for me and then tell me what's left. And so I put in Kong suck, that is, call Kong on the suck function, successor. Um, and it gives me a new hole. And the new hole is of this form. Now that looks familiar. It's exactly associative. And so all we need to do is make a recursive call, and we prove the statement. And so. Um, and because we're, um, we're structurally recursive here, um, we, we're going from a suck to a non-suck. It can see that this terminates, and it's, it's good. It, it uh, terminates, and it type checks, which is generally the things we want. And so we see that we've written basically a recursive function. But you can also think of recursion as induction, and it's an inductive um, proof that the addition is associated. And, um, as I mentioned, I, I magically picked out of a hat that I would recurse on the first argument. Had I recursed on these two, it would have been a lot uglier. Um, and so this brings me to another sort of point, um, is that um, your proofs will often very closely resemble the structure of the functions they're proving things about. And so this sort of breaks um, you know, the hiding of implementations and things. Um, so you usually want to be writing your proofs, um, your proofs close to the functions they're defined to. And, um, writing your functions with your proofs in mind, um, which isn't always possible, but that makes things a lot more pleasant. That's 